Hi, everyone. Just recently, I've been meditating on 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. The apostles, both Peter and Paul, and I think probably James too, um, really urge their readers to regard this day, this time, as very close to the end of everything. And since we're almost 2,000 years past when they made their writings, that means that these times are even closer. I think it's interesting to note what Peter says to put on our priority lists. The first is seeing life as serious and prayer being purposeful. That's what he said in that first verse there. And I know that prayer really seems to be an area of spiritual work that requires a lot more focus from me. I've been enjoying praying for our church family using the monthly calendar during the month of April here, and I hope you've been doing that as well for those who are a part of our church family. Um, the next one gets ranked really highly as well, and it, it almost seems like Peter had a hard time choosing between praying for and loving one another. So he listed praying first, and then he said, above all. So that's where we're at in the next verse. It says, above all, keep fervent in your love for one another. So I guess I'd ask you, how are you doing at being intense in your love for others during this time? Remember, this, this is a self-sacrificing, service, care for one another kind of love. How about, how about those who are in your house? Your spouse, your kids, when they get on your last nerve, when, and I guess we could probably make our list however long of things that might happen even in our own homes. What about loving your church family? Remember, unbelievers are supposed to know we're Christians by how we're loving each other. Then what about your extended family? Some who may want to hear from you or see you via one of the things that are available to us right now. How about loving people in our community who have fear of illness or are actually in danger of illness? Are you wearing masks even though no one's going to enforce it anyway? Love serves. How about loving those who are in authority over us with even how we talk about them. The verse finishes with, uh, because love covers a multitude of sins. So love chooses to acknowledge the error of someone and cover it over without demanding that they get it right. Now, I think I have to make a couple of caveats about that, right? Because God doesn't want sin ignored. We can see that lots of places in scripture and there's an appropriate way for confronting and helping someone deal with their sin. Um, the idea of missing the mark is what this word is. So it probably has a couple of other implications. Um, when, we're, when we love in an area that might not be as grievous kind of a sin or error, we, we really are trusting God to use his spirit to do the work of convicting that person of their sin and need for confession and repentance. We don't have to do all that work or we won't initiate that work at that particular time. Maybe they were rude in the way they just dumped their laundry on the floor even after they've been told to do it differently. That doesn't happen, I'm sure. Maybe, maybe disobedience does need to be corrected in, in that instance, but it's possible that it could be saved for a next time or because you know the circumstances of that day might require something different in the way that you love. I think the hardest part about this is we have to work on our heart to know if we're more bothered about the sin because of how God views it, which is appropriate, or because of how we feel about it. Missing the mark, as I was thinking about it, may go beyond sin too. It may go to just mistakes or errors that just bug us. They miss our standard. Um, in this verse, if love covers a multitude of sins, a multitude of missing the marks, then maybe that's where the, the emphasis is. It's not something that God actually gave a command about or a prohibition about. And so love covering sin can provide some valuable things for us. If we're going to love in those circumstances, our standards or our desires need to take a back seat. Love won't look at those things as we choose to interact with those people. 
love will not demand that they be right or acknowledge that they're wrong and I'm right. They say, or love says, this doesn't matter very much right now, but they matter. They matter to God and they matter to me. He loves them, I'm going to love them, and I will choose to love them right now by covering over this issue. And this verse says we need to fervently pursue this because it can keep us from hurting one another unnecessarily. It will create space to handle mistakes and fix them without anger or hurt feelings intruding into the process. I was meditating on this verse recently because I did it wrong with a member of my family. I won't tell you which one. I created distance and tension between us because I was focused on proving that I was right in how I saw something and they were wrong. Afterward, this verse convicted me and caused me to repent to God and to them. By the way, I had that memorized and so it was able to do that much faster. If I had simply covered this issue, and it wasn't a sin issue, if I had simply covered it with love, there would have been no problem, but I didn't. So I'm, I'm sharing this with you today because perhaps you can learn how not to do it from my example. Or maybe you'll just do it the right way with the instruction from 1 Peter chapter 4. Um, and you'll be able to celebrate how God's word works in everyday life, even when you're quarantined. Keep praying and keep loving and enjoy how God uses you in the lives of others this very next week.